Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm going to share some of my favorite ways to have students understand patterns on a 100 chart or a 120 chart, depending on what you're using. This is actually video number two in a four part series I'm doing right now, focusing on math skills, where I teach you ways to help your students understand each skill conceptually and with some concrete activities as well. The first video I did went out last week and it looks like this right here. And in that video, I share some conceptual ideas as well as concrete ideas for teaching your students how to compare numbers and what it really means when we're doing that. If you watched the last video, then this one will be set up in a very similar way. But today, instead of talking about comparing numbers, we're going to talk about counting patterns and kind of recognizing patterns on a 120 chart. So I'll first share examples of a conceptual idea and lesson to have students kind of explore this topic and what it really means. And then I will also share three concrete activities. So some hands-on activities and activities you can take and use in your classroom right away to help students with this skill. All right, so if you're ready, give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, and let's get started. Recognizing patterns on a 100s or a 120 chart is something I usually have my students do sometime in the fall, maybe late September, early October, after we've really done some practice, you know, counting and one-to-one uh, -one correspondence, looking at numbers within 20. And throughout this video, I'm going to say 100s chart and I'm going to say 120 chart. I've always used a 120 chart in the past because in first grade, our students do need to know those, you know, teen numbers after 100. So I'm going to use them interchangeably, but the activities are going to be just the same. So whether I say 120 chart or 100 chart, you know what I'm talking about. Now, as for why we use this tool for teaching, number one, it's an important tool that your students are going to see and use a lot in first grade. It's a great way to help them see all the numbers we're talking about in first grade from one to 120 all at one time. And as we're going to see through this lesson, it's a great exploratory way for students to kind of recognize these patterns within counting and within numbers. So when introducing this lesson, I would display a 120 chart to my students, a nice big one that they can all see in your classroom. And I would basically tell students, this is a 120 chart. This is a tool we are going to use. All of my students are going to get their own copies in their folders to use during math time. But today I wanted to take a look at this chart and see what we can can learn. I point out that the chart starts up here at the number one and it ends all the way down here at the 120. And then I ask my students, okay, let's work together and count all the way from one to 120. And I use my pointer and as I point one by one, we will count together to 120. This can be a rather slow process to have everybody count together from one to 120, but this is just the perfect way to start off your lesson with counting. After students counted all the way from one to 120, I say something like, wow, we counted all the way from one to 120. How did we do that? When you're asking this question, how did we do that? What you're trying to get from your students is that we counted by ones. And if you've already practiced some circle counting and counting behaviors in your classroom, your students might know that right away. They also might know that from kindergarten. They might say, oh, we went number by number. Uh, we followed along the 120 chart. They're gonna give you these answers that kind of lead to we counted by ones. Once it's been clarified that we just counted by ones all the way from one to 120, then I ask my students, hmm, is there a faster way we could count to 120? Now again, if your students are familiar with some skip counting, you'll probably get some ideas right away. Students might say, oh, we could count by fives. If a student says that, ask them to explain more. What does that look like? What does that sound like? And as they count five, 10, 15, 20, as they do that, be sure to use your pointer and highlight those numbers on the 120 chart as students get to 120. Now going back to my math talk video right here, very important video, when your students answer, oh, you can count by fives and they show you an example, make sure you pause and ask the class, do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you think this way was faster? Do you have a faster way? Don't just say, yes, good job and move on. Have students really talk about it. Ask them, what did so-and-so do? How did she get to, you know, 120? And they'll say, oh, she counted by fives. Oh, good. Do you agree that that was faster or do you disagree? And hear what they have to say. Then ask students again, is there another faster way that you could get to 120 instead of just counting by ones? And you'll probably have students answer by tens. And when they answer by tens, they will very likely say 10, 20, 30, 
40. And again, you'll point with your pointer all the way down that last side with the zeros, right? The counting by tens, the multiples of tens. After you ask students to kind of restate that and ask if they agree or disagree that that's faster than counting by ones, ask them what they notice about that column. What do they notice? They'll probably tell you, oh, it all ends in zero. They might also notice that the tens place goes up one every single time because they're counting by tens. So counting by fives and tens is probably going to be the first way students come up with the faster way, but make sure you keep that 120 chart up there and ask again, is there a faster way? We don't have to just count by fives and tens. Take a look at this chart. Is there a faster way I could have gotten to 120? Now, some students might offer up, oh, you could start at the eights there. That's something I've heard commonly. You could start at the eights or the sevens, right? They're kind of noticing a pattern right away without saying it yet. And if they say something like that, then ask them to explain and they'll explain they'll actually count down 8, 18, 28, etc. all the way down. And then they'll explain that you have to hop a couple over until you get to 120. And then ask students what they think about that. Again, ask them the pattern that they're noticing. All of those have an 8 in the ones place. If for some reason your students don't offer that up right away, go ahead and point to the four at the top of the 120 chart and ask them a prediction question. Say, hmm, what do you think is going to happen if I start at the four here and count down? What number will I end up on if I count by tens? How do you know? Students will recognize that that whole column ends in four and that they will likely end up on 94 or 114, depending on the chart you're using. Um, and they'll know that because they can count by tens in each one. What this gets students to recognize is that you can count by tens starting at any number. This is important for students to recognize when they're thinking about counting and patterns and the numbers that we're going to talk about, that when they're counting by tens, they don't have to start at 10. They can really pick any number and they can count by fives, they can count by twos, they can count by tens, starting at any number. This is helping them build that conceptual knowledge around counting and number patterns that's going to be very useful for them when thinking flexibly about numbers. So that right there was a basic walkthrough of an introductory lesson, getting your students to recognize these patterns on a 120 chart. Now you don't just wanna end it there, you wanna reinforce these concepts throughout the year by using that 120 chart, asking students to, you know, start at the number six, count by fives, what does that look like? Start at the number three, count by tens, what does that look like? These will get reinforced throughout the year, but that's the introductory lesson. So now we've talked about some conceptual ideas, let's talk about concrete ones. How can we get students to understand these number patterns on a 120 chart with some real hands-on activities? Let me show you. All right, in terms for some concrete activities to get your students to understand patterns on a 120 chart, I did explain that you want to introduce the 120 chart and also give your students their own copy. That way, as you reference different patterns, they can look at their own 120 chart as well. And then one activity I like to use is just having 120 charts with missing numbers. Now this is something I would first do with the class to show them different ways to solve it. And then also I have a bunch of different copies. This is from my numbers to 120 unit. It's both in the math club and it is on TPT. And here all students have to do is fill in the missing numbers. Now you can see there's many different ways they could do that, which is why I like to do this as a group first. And I like to ask them different ways they would solve. First, typically students will say, oh, you can just count one. We know this is going to be two. Continue counting, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then I ask students, is there another way you could know what number this is going to be? If I just point to this number right here, this blank box, do I need to count all the way to figure out what this one's gonna be? Students might recognize those patterns again on the chart. They'll see here, there's a four in the ones place, and then the tens place goes up by 10. So we have zero, 10, 20, 30. And we can check that with the 44, 54. In fact, we could keep going. 64, 74, and fill in some more. So we don't need to count by ones. Again, I have a bunch of different versions of these charts with missing numbers, so students could practice this a few times and really get used to those patterns. Another concrete activity I love for getting students to understand these patterns is to use chart puzzles. So here again, I have a bunch of them in the SJT club as well as on TPT, and they already have little lines 
for you so they're already like pre-done puzzles so you don't have to think about where to cut them but all you'd have to do is print out a 120 chart i do like to laminate it this one's on construction paper but i would laminate it too so they last better um, and then students just have to construct it they have to look at the different numbers to see where these are going to match up and to make sure that these patterns still connect so again they can use their knowledge that they use and say okay I know that this is going to be down here, right? Because we're at 100 down here, 111. We're not yet there, but I do know that it's going to line up here because the twos column, the threes column, I can get I can get started with where that might go. And then I know this is the seven. Oh, and then I can put this here. Students can do this with a partner, but they can also do this independently. I have a bunch of different ones that students can get used to. Like I said, I do like to print them out and laminate them so students can reuse these over and over. They make for a great little center. All right, and last but not least, another concrete activity I love for this is called arrow paths. Now, I actually love this activity so much I made its own video. Here is what the thumbnail looks like. It's from a long time ago, but I basically explain how to play the game. Now, also just to point out, this uh, 120 chart I absolutely love. It's from Learning Resources, and it is great for small groups. All these tiles come out, um, and it has two sides. This side, all the little divots for the tiles have the actual number to match up. And then I'm not gonna flip it over because the tiles will fall out. But underneath has all the same divots, but they're blank. So it's a great kind of scaffold for your students. And you could take out like, you know, a whole group of numbers, leave all the rest in, and then students would have to either individually or with a partner, put the numbers back in their right place. So for students that need it, it would be similar to this type of activity, except it would be tactile because they can actually fill in the tiles. I'll go ahead and link this number chart down in the description because like I said, small groups, love it. Okay, as for how to play arrow paths, I start it as a whole group activity so students learn how to play, but then very quickly it can move into a partner activity where they are making their own number paths. To play, students would just need a little mini whiteboard and a marker. I'll use paper here just to show, and they would need a 120 chart. Now, one student would go ahead and close their eyes, and I would choose any number on the board. Let's start with 54. And then I would make an arrow path. So I might go up, to the right, to the right, down. And then I usually put a circle here, and that is where students have to figure out what number they're going to land on if they follow this arrow path. Now, when they are starting, they will start with their board. 54, okay, going up, go to 44. Going to the right twice, 45, 46. And then back down, 56. That's what I landed on. And that's how they follow their arrow path. Now the goal of this is to eventually move on so students don't even need to use their 120 chart and I explain more about this in its own video, but the goal would be to move on and for students to recognize that they see an up arrow and then a down arrow, those are going to cancel each other out, right? Because they're moving back 10, but then they're counting forward 10 again. They're kind of back in the same row. Arrow paths is a great activity for students to understand the way a 120 chart works, that if you're moving up, you're counting back 10. If you're moving down, you're counting forward 10. Left, you're counting back by ones, and right, you're counting forward by ones. And again, you kind of do this whole group a few times, have students practice with their 120 chart, and then when they're ready, you remove the 120 chart entirely, pick out an arrow path, and see if students can understand what this is without them even using it. So 16, counting by tens more would be 26, 36, over to the right, 37, and then they can check it on their board. 16, down, down, to the right. All right, so there were some of my favorite ways to help you teach your first grade students about those tricky numbers on a 120 chart. It helps them understand how to use the chart as a tool, how there are different counting patterns that they can see with the numbers, and it really helps them think flexibly about those numbers. Remember, your goal as a primary teacher is to really build up students' number sense, so that way as they move on to more complex skills in older grades, they have that foundation. 
I hope you enjoyed this video and you can take this exact lesson or parts of this lesson and just go ahead and use it in your own classroom this upcoming fall. Also, all those concrete activities I shared with you, if you are in the SJT Math Club, especially if you have the yearly version, those are all in my numbers to 120 pack for my math workshop to use throughout the year. So it'll be in the bonus section. Here's what that looks like in case you need to see. Um, I do have the number puzzles under the number sense right here. But then of course, if you have the yearly option, you also had access to the entire math workshop for the year. And there I have this entire numbers to 120 unit where I have all three of these activities. And if you wanna know more about the SJT Math Club and what's offered inside, just click the link down in my description. It will pull up the wait list because we're going to be opening very soon. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up so I know. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel and click that bell. That way you're notified of every new video. See you in the next one. Bye.